Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Shabby Meets Bling. And it is that time of the month again. No, no, not that time of the month. It's the time of the month where we ask ourselves, what would you make? Well, I am going to take a smorgasbord board of wood goodies and try to make a shabby chic wine rack. These are some of the items I may use. So see, it's a virtual buffet of wood goodies. It's gonna be a lot of work, we need to get started. But first, I would like to thank Zaina from OK at Home DIY and Connie from Connie's Wood Shops and DIYs for hosting and the lovely ladies at Deco Easy for guest hosting this month's What Would You Make? You will find links to their channels as well as this playlist in the description box below. So here's my options. I've got vintage 1903 molding. I have half spindles. I have a piece of old wood from a table from another project. That's a vintage popcorn bucket. I have more molding, the top of an old TV tray, not super old, but old. And this lovely warped sandwich board thing that I got free uh, at a garage sale because evidently they couldn't sell it and they thought, she's a soccer shield. It'll take anything. As a friend of mine said, if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> take a look at how warped this poor thing is. It is warped and moldy. And I think my best bet is to disassemble. It was in such a bad condition. Just a couple of gentle taps and this thing just kind of fell apart. Now I just need to uh, remove all the pins. I love when disassembly is this incredibly easy. So easy. So since I have it disassembled and this thing is intended to hold wine bottles, I am going to make it a little more meaty. I'm going to put that top piece on the inside and use this new piece of wood and uh, double up two pieces for the new top. Here is that old warped, look how warped that is, uh, piece from the bottom. And I'm going to take that and use it as a template and trace it onto that top of the TV tray. And I don't even know, I don't even know how long ago they stopped making those TV trays, but I don't think anybody uses them anymore. So I'm just gonna simply trace it and then make sure we are nice and square. Then I take it over to the chop saw and uh, we cut her to size. A quick sanding, then we begin to reassemble. These are those two top pieces that I cut. Now I'm just going to glue them, clamp them, and screw them together. This is that original top piece and I am just making sure it's centered because I'm going to glue it and screw it to those two other pieces that I just glued and screwed together. You can, you can really see how much more strong and stable and meaty this, this wine rack is going to be now. Now it's just clamping and pinning the top. Then we turn our attention to the bottom. Instead of having that bottom piece lay flat on the ground, I am inserting it up an inch and some change into the bottom and I'm wood gluing and screwing it and it's giving me a little bit of hassle, of course, because it's at an angle, but I will win this battle. Ha <laughs> ha. Pre-drilling. <laughs> Do some pilot holes, make it a lot easier. And uh, there we go. Well, there she is, new and improved and meaty. And I did go back and screw the top in really well. The pins were just a temporary hold so I could complete the bottom. Our wine rack is now reconstructed and very sturdy. So now it's time to see how many of those old wood items I can use to make it pretty. We'll see how many of them make the cut. Pun intended. So here's that molding from 1903. It's the top of a door and it has 
nail holes in it, of course, but I do not care because this thing is shabby and chic. Or it will be. Right now it's just pretty shabby. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this thing in half because I have plans. There's going to be a, a piece that's going to go on the front and on the back and on either end I'm going to use those for something special. Because this thing is so incredibly old, when I cut it in half, uh, the little minor components came apart because it's put together with multiple pieces. So I am simply wood gluing and clamping and uh, pin nailing everything back together. And now I apply that beautiful molding to the front and to the back. This is the other old <laughs> antique <laughs> molding and I'm going to remove the nails and cut it down to size and add a base to both the front and the back. Those antique half spindles got to participate in this uh, little project. There's only two that were the same so I only use them on the front but I did cut a teeny bit off the other one to add kind of like a little uh, capital at the top of each spindle. I'm taking the both the ends of that door molding and I'm going to create kind of a like a holder for my popcorn bucket. It's going to kind of like a horseshoe shape almost. Each side is going to get cut with a curve and then the tiny part of the curve will meet in the middle on the top of our wine rack. A wine rack isn't a wine rack if it doesn't have holes to slide your bottles through. So I am going to create three large holes in the back and two small holes in the front and you'll see why there's only two small holes in the front when this little project's done. Do you remember that? That vintage popcorn bucket? Well, now I'm going to take it, and some might say destroy it, but I'm gonna turn it into something else to enhance our shabby chic wine rack. I picked this thing up for a buck at a resale shop, but evidently, it's worth some money, but I do not care. <laughs> my plan here is to make my popcorn bucket look like a wine cask. So I have a scrolly medallion and some fruit, and I'm gonna start cutting things up and arranging them on here and see what I can make out of this. I am filling my grapes with foam so they're they're much firmer and easier to glue on. And I'm just hot gluing everything in place. And grape by grape, just make a cask. <laughs> Once everything is glued securely in place, I am giving a coat of antique white. After I was finished with my first coat, I came back in with some white dimensional paint and I filled all the gaps. I had four of these little medallions left from a, another project. So I decided to add two to the front and two to the back because details, details. I wanted it to look old and vintage and antique. And uh, this was a nice way of doing it. And once they were applied, it is time to paint. I love to paint. <laughs> I think everybody knows that. I would rather spray paint. For some reason, I like to spray paint more than I do painting with a brush. But hey, painting is painting and it's all a good time. So let's give this thing some paint. Um, it took quite a few coats and I am not filling in everything. I want there to be some old peeking through so you know it's old. I need to add just a couple more things to enhance the functionality of my shabby chic wine rack because I really want to use this thing. So once I do that, we'll take a look. This is part of uh, hardware to hang a clothes rod. 
And this is where I attached it. Remember that third hole for the wine bottle? Well, the span was too big to get a wine bottle in there without it falling. So I put in the little hardware piece. That top shelf I added, so you can put your crook screw in there. And the back of my cask, I painted with chuckboard paint. That way I can write on there what kind of wine is in the wine rack. Well, there she is, there's the front. And there's the former <laughs> Vintage popcorn bucket, now wine cask. And you can see the detailing that I added, the little scrolly medallion thing that I cut apart. There's part of it at the top of the capital. And I use the other part at the bottom. I think it makes a wonderful addition to my outdoor dining area. That lamp, it does not work. I picked it up at Goodwill. It was $4.99 and it was a green tag and it was a green tag week. So I grabbed it for half off and I added a flashlight on the inside of it. Easy way to get lighting on the exterior of your home. Once again, I'd like to thank Zena, Connie, and the girls from Deco Easy for hosting and guest hosting this month's What Would You Make? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your family and friends. You can support this channel by subscribing, so don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. And don't forget to check out my brand new Etsy shop. I'll leave the link in the description box below. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.